While some people who get bitten by the comet bug become scientists, most remain amateur fans. Then there's the select few who make comets a lifelong passion. Head south out of Adelaide, Australia, and point yourself toward the sea. After an hour, you'll find a tiny town with a galactic secret. Driving through Yankalilla takes this long. It's not the kind of place you might expect to find a man like Bill Bradfield. Well, all the ones I discovered bear my name. I'm the sole discoverer, 18 altogether. Bill is a comet hunter. I expect to find another one sometime in the near future. In all, he has found and named 18 comets. More than anyone else on the planet. I guess perhaps I uh, persevered more, or maybe made an effort, uh, in particular, getting up in the morning. His remarkable find spans three decades, beginning in 1974. And the secret to Bill's prolific success? Well, he's very nonchalant about his technique. Just a matter of uh, sweeping the sky and uh, ele changing the elevation by a little strip, so you can gradually you know, going up. Now, you might think someone this good, by the way, Bill is a retired rocket scientist, might also be using the very cutting edge of technology, trying to squeeze every advantage out. It's been lying around for about two years, and the mice had chewed at and crapped on it and so on. But anyway. Well, you'd be wrong. Look closely at Bill's telescopes, and you'll find a man of simple means. Well, I built this in 1970. I was when I got the bug. This is his first telescope. 14 of my discoveries were made with this one. Complete with twine, a juice bottle cap, and a lens that is more than 100 years old. Back in 1970, I paid $60 for it. Second-hand wood and bolts and nuts, yes. He says the secret was in his wooden stand. You can't do an hour or two hours glued at the eyepiece and have a strained neck or whatever. You've got to have comfortable observing, and this gives it to you. Comfort is important, but knowledge and patience are key. The hunt for a comet is measured in thousands of hours spent alone. I discovered my first one after 260 hours. Looking for something that doesn't belong. But when you come across something you don't remember being in that spot, as the excitement starts from that moment, it's a, new, it's a comet. Today, Bill uses a more modern, more powerful telescope. F5.6. Uh, mirror, Newtonian-type telescope. It uses a collector mirror to focus the light and allow him to see objects even farther away. You see the mirror down there? Yes, and my reflection. Now, he still built this one himself. The wood came from a scrap pile. The precise collector mirror came from California. It's bulky, awkward, and not particularly beautiful, but it works. Three discoveries made with that one, including the one last year. On any clear morning or clear night, the best place to find Bill is loading up and getting ready to go hunting. Bill has spent so much time out here with his first telescope, he figures he's seen it all. So the new telescope built a few years ago is allowing him to see farther and fainter objects. I think the chance of discovering a comet visually, the old way, my way, uh, are getting near zero. I probably might win another one because I'm still able to focus on some part of the southern sky. OK, ready to go. All I have to do now is take the lid off. And there's the hook of the Scorpius, Scorpion at the end there. With his weathered star chart, complete with decades of notes, the hunt is on. I do a sweep, which is limited in azimuth. Bill spends much of his time looking just above the horizon, in a place big modern computer-driven telescopes can't see because of their inability to tilt. Those areas very low down are still prime territory for me. The payoff comes when he spots something that's not on any star chart, but that's not all. The final test, a comet's got to move 
If it doesn't move, then it's just another star. But because comets race around the sun, the movement can be detected in a matter of minutes. Most comet discoverers would like to see their comet become a real beauty. Hmm. There's more excitement. If it's a faint thing that hardly registers in a telescope, it's not so exciting at all. If you want to see one of Bill's comets with your own eyes, set up your telescope in about 60 years. One of his discoveries will be back then. The next one returns in about 120 years. In the meantime, 76-year-old Bill Bradfield says he'll keep hunting.